Good evening and welcome to oneshul.org. My name is Ketsira and I'm very pleased to be here again with you tonight, leading us through this Rosh Chodesh service. It's Rosh Chodesh Adar tonight, so it's the first night of Adar at sunset. So we begin the rush through to our next series of uh, holidays coming up with Purim and then Pesach and Shavuot. So uh, we are in the last few days of calm between a big holiday season for our tribe. Uh, I've posted, uh, oh, let me start by saying uh, our pre-service music tonight was an amazing medley of Adono La, uh, uh, Odiavo Shalom Alenu uh, by the Kirtan Rabbi. So if you logged in about 10 minutes before service, you would have heard that. And then that last song was Sulam by Holy Taya. So that was uh, who sung us in on our way tonight. And I saw some comments in the chat room about the music. So I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. That first one again was by uh, the Kirtan Rabbi, Andrew Han. And then uh, that last song was by Holy Taya. And that one's called Sulam. And it's off her new album, uh, Torah Tantrika. Thanks to them both, as always, for allowing us to use their music here. Ah, so I've posted an updated version of the service. Uh, the link is in the chat room for everybody. So basically the same service with a few things that every single month I say, oh, I should clean that up, and I never do. So I actually had time today to clean that up just a little bit and uh, fix some typos and a couple of other things. So let us begin tonight, as we often do, by introducing ourselves in the chat room. Who are you and where in the world are you physically? So I'm Ketsira, as I mentioned, and uh, I am coming to you from Washington, D.C. in the United States. Oh, Tr Tracy, you're in Mobile, Alabama. Wait, you're usually coming to us from Georgia, right? You know, the southern states of the U.S. are always representing here at uh, One Shell. We have to get a little more of, oh, you moved, Tracy. That's fabulous. I hope that's a good thing. And, of course, we have uh, our Canadian friends always joining us. And I see Ari, so he's from, who is from Poland. So we have the European side logging in as well tonight, which is fantastic. Ah... <sighs> And Tamara in Massachusetts, yes, I checked in with my mom earlier and she's under two feet of snow right now uh, in southern Massachusetts. So I'm a little grateful right now that uh, DC did not get hit with any snow at all. Um, so that is really great, at least for us. Uh, all right, well, let's get started with our service tonight. <laughs> And welcome, Rebecca, who is uh, coming to us from Vancouver, BC tonight, but is actually from uh, Bellingham, Washington. Uh, my mother-in-law lived in Bellingham for a little while. So why do we come together each month? What is that all about? Well, we come together as a community to welcome in the new month and give thanks for all the blessings in the month that has passed and receive strength for struggles in the month to come. We come together to affirm the idea of living in Jewish time and to celebrate and honor our unique and sacred calendar and to take this opportunity each month to say, yes, this is my tribe, these are my people, this is my calendar, and to give ourselves the chance to experience sacred time. It's the same reason we come together for Shabbat for many reasons. It's the idea of sacred time and sacred cycles and aligning ourselves, our bodies, our minds, and our whole world as much as we can in Jewish time. Ooh, do I have my mitzvah cards tonight? They're upstairs, so worst case, yes, I can run up and get them if people want to do that. I forgot to grab them. But yeah, during one of the chants where we play one of Holy Teas, I'll run upstairs and I'll grab them. <laughs> All right. So why don't we begin with our Baruch Hu, 
the chant that we use to delineate sacred time and sacred space and to transform ourselves from our everyday experience and feeling into one of being in sacred space together even though we are not physically in space together or in physical locations together. So we'll sing our bar hu, and as always, I invite you to share the name you wish to be known as in this space uh, in the chat room so I can sing you in. And please feel free to sing along at home, drum, listen, whatever it is that moves you. And if you want to sing everyone else in, when I used to have the Rosh Chodesh group here at my house, that's actually what we did. I had this gate uh, out in my yard, my garden where we had the service and everyone would line up in front of the gate and I would go in first and I would sing the first person in. And then when that person came in, we'd both turn and we'd sing in the next person. And it was really lovely to build everything and build everybody into the space. So if you want to sing along, the actual correct words are finally posted to do that. So I totally invite you all to do that and have a part of that tonight. So let us transition into our temporal temple, our cyber mishkan that envelops all of us and brings us together. Marhu, dear one, Shachina, holy name. When I call on the light of my soul, I come home. Marhu. Dear one, Eliana, holy name, you have called on the light of your soul. Welcome home, Marhu, dear one, Ariel. have called on the light of your soul. Welcome home. Marhu, dear one, Eliav, holy name. When I call on the light of you have called on the light of your soul. Welcome home, Marhu, dear one. Darian, holy name. You have called on the light of your soul. Welcome home, Marhu, dear one, Tamara, holy name. You have called on the light of your soul. Welcome home. Marhu, dear one, Rebecca, holy name, you have called on the light of your soul, welcome home. And now that we're all in the space, we sing the last verse together, sing with me or call in response as I sing each line. Marhu, dear one, Shekhinah, holy name. We have called on the light of our souls. We've come home.
take a moment and breathe deeply in. Breathe all the way from your toes, up through your body, out the top of your head, and then back down the other way. One more. One of the things I love about that approach to Barhu is it lets us ground and center and also invoke the Holy One kind of in one big fluid moment. So we get that transition into sacred space. We get grounding and centering and we get the invocation of the Holy One all together, which I really love. And I love that it builds with all our voices. And even though I can't hear you, I can hear you. It's one of my absolute favorite ways to bring everyone together, whether we are in body or whether we are across uh, electricity and the network. Um, I have another one that at some point when we're all in the same physical space together, I'm going to do with you all. It's using the Shema and it's incredibly powerful. It blows me away every time, especially other people's reactions to it, especially the first time they experience it. So at some point, I know we're all actually going to be in physical space together, or at least many of us will, and we will get to try that one. So I'm very excited. Someday we'll get to do that. But now that we are all in space together, ah, let us move into our expressions of gratitude and welcome to whoever it is that just joined us. I hope you will log in and introduce yourself. So we begin with gratitude for the month that has passed. Because, like we say every month, no matter what's gone wrong, a million things had to go right every day for you to be here right now. You had to wake up. You had to be able to get through each day. Hopefully you had employment or something else important to go to. You had enough food. You had clean water. With any luck, you have people who love you and support you in your life. You have amazing things like transit. Uh, and the internet, which to me is pure magic. I do not understand. I actually do understand technically how the internet works, but I still think it's one of those things that it somewhat works because we all believe it works. Chashmal, which is the uh, ancient word for ether, the electricity that fuels the world, and is actually now the modern Hebrew word for electricity. To me, it's that stuff that connects us all that we now have. We now get to experience through the internet, which I think is really amazing. So, so many things that have, must have gone right in your life. Don't worry, we'll talk about the things you need help with, but first and foremost, let's talk about the things that went right and that we're actually grateful for. So, we use the morning prayer, Moda Ani, which we sing every morning. If you happen to do Shacharit, morning prayers, you do this every single day. It's a pretty amazing way to start the day, too, by saying what you're grateful for, especially that you woke up, and that's enough sometimes. So we've got the transliteration there, Moda Ani for the ladies, Moda Ani for the gentlemen. If you prefer masculine God language, you will sing Lifa Necha, Vikayam at the end. If you prefer feminine God language, you will sing Lifanaich Vikayemet. And that's the last word, Vikayemet. So whichever one you want, doesn't matter if you mix them up to me or get them wrong, wrong or right. And best part is you can experiment and try different things to see how it feels to you. So Hebrew is a gendered language. We do have to make choices on that front. If you're a woman, Moda. If you're a man, Moda. And then other than that, it depends on which way you experience the Holy One or which way you wish to experience the Holy One tonight. And then we'll sing the English together, which is gender neutral. Moda ani lefanecha Moda ani lefanecha Ruachai Vekayam, oh, I am grateful, oh, I am grateful. If 
in the face of the one in the face of the one moda ani lefanaich moda ani lefanaich ruach In the face of the one, in the face of the one, once more in the Hebrew, then we'll start singing what you're all grateful for as you share it in the chat room. Moda ani lefanecha, moda ani lefanecha, ruach Oh, we are grateful. Oh, we are grateful for family and friends and the chance to build a better life. Moda ani lefanaich. Moda ani lefanaich. Ruachai v'kayemet. Oh, we are grateful. Oh, we are grateful for Hashem good health and work to do. Moda ani lefanaich. Moda ani lefanaich, ruachai v'kayam b'kayemet. Oh, we are grateful, oh, we are grateful for friends, treatment team, and Tamara's artwork on display, which she's going to tell us more about. Oh, we are grateful. Oh, we are grateful for a roof over our heads, food in the fridge, and gracious landlords. Moda ani lefanecha. Moda ani lefanecha, ruachai v'kayam. One more time around all together in the Hebrew and the English. Moda ani lefanecha, moda ani lefanecha. Ruachai v'kayam. Oh, we are grateful. Oh, we are grateful. In the face of the one. In the face of the one. So many things that we are grateful for this month. So many we have shared with each other that are in our hearts that we're not even sure how to put into words. And I really do want to hear more about Tamara having artwork on display. That's amazing, as so is everything else. But I am such a sucker for artists getting their work shown. So please share more about that when you get a chance. As I think that is great. Uh, as well as roof over our heads, food in our fridge, supportive friends and family, jobs to go to, and everything else that people have shared. <sighs> so, we have ended the month of Shvat with gratitude. We have thought of the things that are good, 
and that we are grateful for. And now as we move into the month of Adar, maybe there's something, one or two things that you could use a little bit of help with, that you could use strength to get through, that you could use knowing that someone else is praying for you, or just the important part of putting it out there what you need, letting the Holy One know what it is you need support with, just because in theory, depends on how you experience it, the Holy One is thoroughly omniscient and omnipresent and should theoretically know what you need. If you haven't noticed, if you don't say it out loud, a lot of the times it doesn't happen because there's a lot going on. Putting your intentions out there just ripples the Holy One and the fabric of the Holy One all through the world. So you have to say it out loud and sometimes you have to ask the Holy One for help and sometimes you have to just put it out there for the rest of us so we can lend our energy and our blessing to what it is you need help with. Oh, Tamara, that is amazing. And I hope you will send, I hope you'll email, I want email me with like a link to the, show me the, what it looks like. I'd love to see it. So we can all take a look at some point. That would be amazing. Um, so whatever it is, we all need strength for in the month to come. We use the song, Micha Mocha, and the, especially the version that is the spirit is flowing and growing. So Micha Mocha is a traditional song and we use the version by Holy Thea that brings it into the English that we're, most of us are more comfortable in and lets us say, Holy One, I know you're there. I know you are great and do wondrous things in times of past and times now, both things large and small. Ugh, be beside me and be within me so I can do the work I need to do in the world and be the person I'm supposed to be in the world. So we will sing together and I'll pull up the beautiful version by our fr friend and collective friend of One Shul, Holy Thea. And we will get to listen to her uh, as we sing our chant tonight. Oh, 
So if you like, share in the chat room what it is that you need help with in the month to come. And if you want to help pray for someone else, this is a great time to check out the One Shul Prayer Wall. Amazingly, it's always amazing how many people come to this prayer wall and share anonymously, many of them, uh, what it is they need help with. Just knowing that someone might be praying for them is enough for so many people to feel held and heard. And it's amazing to see all the sadness that is there, but at the same time, the hope that is in the simple act of saying, please pray for me. And that is absolutely amazing. Uh, so let me read just a couple of those to you so we can give voice to those anonymous people who have been sharing what it is they need help with. Please pray for my dear friend who is struggling with depression and thoughts of suicide. She has spent a long time fighting this and I fear her strength may be giving out. Patience and strength. I am a student teacher and finding the challenges a bit more overwhelming recently. Please pray for Hashem to help me find direction and purpose in the possible end of my marriage. Whew. And so many things for each of us. Jobs. <sighs> Oh, travel, loved ones, conversion, <sighs> cancer treatments. Oh, not having a loved one, not having a bashert, having a bashert you need to get to, and not having a life partner and a, a bashert. Whew, oh, having a solo performance and the potential to be a paid soloist. That's amazing. And even having the perfect person to move in next door. Or how about at least good enough moving in next door? I echo so many of the many, many things you all are sharing. As always, for me, it is balancing my work with my job the work I feel called to do versus the work that actually pays my bills and the natural tension that comes with that. Uh, it is becoming more of a struggle again. I go through waves and right now it's a little bit more of a struggle again. <sighs> so for all of these many things that we pray for, we ask the Holy One to hear us. We ask for strength to see the month through. Blessed are you, Holy One, who provides us obstacles and challenges so we may learn and grow. Amen.
So there was a request when we began uh, to grab the cards, which I did. Um, so if you've been here before, you've done this. So uh, I am, uh, as many of you know, I'm a card reader. I have many, many decks. Uh, one of my decks, and the one that I primarily use here at One Shoal, is the mitzvah cards. So these are Jewish on every single front. They take the, it's not 613, but it's, uh, it's about 50, 60 different mitzvot, uh, traditional ones, and give us the Hebrew, it gives us the scripture, and it gives us uh, a sense of what the kavanah, the intent, is. And I want to kick us off tonight, actually, by showing you... Um, so on my altar, and I, okay, I, on one of my altars, I have several. Uh, I have this little holder, and it has this card on it all the time. And this card actually is from another deck, the Guy in Tarot, uh, and it has a little tiny bit of a poem by Mary Oliver, who's an American poet that I love, and everybody loves Mary Oliver. She's a very popular poet, and she's a very good poet who happens to be popular. But this little snippet says, Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And so each week or every couple of weeks or here with you all, when I pull a card from the mitzvah card, from the mitzvah card deck, I put it, you can see there's a little slots. So right in front of this, sitting there all the time for me, is that mitzvah card. And it comes up to about right here on it. So it says, tell me, what is it you plan to do? And then my mitzvah card is right below it. So it helps to ground me every day and remind me of the work that I'm supposed to be doing in the world uh, and what it means to be aligned with the Holy One and a part of that as opposed to fighting against the Holy One, being with the flow, as opposed to trying to go against the flow. So that's one of the ways that I use them. Um, that's me. So, <laughs> oh, Ari, right, you'll have to see if you can get these somewhere in Poland. That would be, or Polish. That would be amazing. Have them translate these into Polish for you. Um, although your English is great, so. All right, so as usual, we use these before we go into our last section of our service, which is receiving of energy, opening to blessings. And these cards give us something, for those who wish to participate, give us something to each think about during the, uh, while we're doing that chant and opening ourselves up for blessing. So I am going to start shuffling for a second. And I'm going to assume that Ari is first because he asked us to do this. And anyone else who would like a card pulled, please chime in in the chat room right now. And <laughs> I will try to get everybody in order. So Ari, you're first. Tell me when to stop. Shuffling, shuffling, and I'm shuffling, shuffling, and I stopped. Okay. Before I draw this one, it's the top one, let me answer the other question on whose cards these are. No, these are actually not Marsha Prager. These are from um, a group called Reclaiming Judaism, and one of these days I'm going to remember the name of the rabbi who did these. So it is uh, reclaimingjudaism.org, I believe. You can get them on Amazon. Um, that's where I bought them. So... Uh, Really great set. Marsha Prager has another one, but not, um, that I think is uh, Amita, maybe, or her. She has her book, of course, The Path of Blessing. So, all right, Ari, I stopped. I didn't change it from there. So let's see what it says. Mm. You got the mikvah. Immerse and clear. Transition spiritually into marriage, covenant, holy days, healing, and monthly renewal in quotes there, but let's take it literally, through the mitzvah of Tahara, reflective immersion in the living waters of a river, <coughs> ocean, lake, or dedicated mitzvah facility. And the script, uh, scripture is Leviticus 15, 13. I'm gonna go with that one's pretty straightforward, Ari. I am sensing uh, either a mikvah visit in your life or maybe just a ritual bath or shower. 
uh, or even collected rainwater that you can use to maybe wash your hands as you uh, move into the Sabbath or maybe next month, right before at the end of the month, right before uh, Rosh Chodesh. Ah, Goldie Milgram. Thank you, Darian. So that's what yours is, is to spend the month exploring the idea. It's frozen, so you could melt some ice. <laughs> living waters. So that might even work too, to take some of the frozen in and melt it and then use that on your hands. All right, let me see who was next. Um, Addy, you are next. So tell me when to stop shuffling. All right. You, oh, uh, I love all of them, so I'm going to say repeatedly, I love this one. Uh, you got Hadlakat Nerot, bring in the light. Create the hearth of the Jewish home by lighting Shabbat candles and Holy Day candles to frame sacred times together. And the scripture is Isaiah 58, 13. This is another one that I always feel is a pretty simple, straightforward one but it is the action of doing it that is always really important to me. So if you don't regularly light Sabbath candles, maybe it's the time to try it next week and see how that works for you. Uh, and see if you can go the whole month by every Friday night lighting the Sabbath candles and seeing what effect that it has on the way you view the world, the way you see, feel time, the way you have an experience with the Holy One. So see what that does for you and let us know. All right, let me see who's next. Uh, Tracy, you're up. All right, I'm shuffling. I always feel like I should have some like fake mystical mojo thing going right now, but I'm a really straightforward card reader. <laughs> okay, Tracy. Mm. Lo ta'anet. Witness honestly. Take exquisite care to report truthfully what was said or done. Let justice be miscarried by parents, judges, referees, teachers, and more. I've gotten this card, and I usually just stare at it and squint at it for a minute. And then I'll have all these moments in my day where I am relaying something and I'll find myself over embellishing for the good or the bad. And suddenly this card flashes in front of my face. And I have to be reminded to be very careful to be as truthful as I can in that moment. So it looks like this month coming is a month where truth is very important. And you should really, really be careful about making sure you're being very accurate in what you are saying about any situation that you're in and make sure that you are uh, really being as truthful as you can this month. Not in the like every little white lie that's going to hurt someone kind of way, but in the really important stuff. Be careful about um, over embellishing or I'm not about to accuse you of lying <laughs> or stretching the truth. Um, and the text is Exodus 20 13. All right, let's see. Oh, Tamara, you are next, ma'am. All right, I'm shuffling. You get to say when. Shalom Bait. Co-create peace. Undertake conscious acts of self-restraint, love, and generosity that may yield greater peace at home. This is another good one, uh, especially when, for the type of thing it's reminding us of. So if you have any tension going on at home right now, and, and stretch your idea of home. Home can be home. It can be the workplace. In your case, maybe it's even with your treatment teams while, while you're receiving treatment. But especially that key phrase of undertake conscious acts of self-restraint, love, and generosity. 
So when you're in a moment and you feel stressed or angry or like you're losing it a little bit, take a deep breath and remember, shalom bite. And breathe through that moment because you will be receiving 10 times return this month for every moment you can do that. Uh, it's very hard to be the bigger person often, but this is what your challenge is this month, is to breathe through those moments and know that you will be receiving in gratitude and love and just a stable home and world. Not letting yourself get walked on, not letting yourself be taken advantage of, but in the moments where you can at least stop to think, is this really important to me? So in the scripture is Genesis eighteen thirteen. And a psalm, always a good thing. Psalm 34, 15. That's yours this month. All right. Darian, you are next. Mm. Strange time of year, so let's see what we do with this one. Le chef basuka, sit in asuka. Put together your fragile harvest home. Now open your life's inner circle by inviting friends and neighbors to enter for meals, ritual, study, and contemplation, sheltered in holiness as awe of nature filters in. It's Leviticus 23:42. Hmm. So what do we do with this one? Because it's frozen in many, many places. It's not exactly time for a sukkah, but... What's interesting on the timing of this is coming up in Adar, we have Purim. And one of the traditions of Purim, you can have an igloo, that would be amazing. Um, <laughs> one of the traditions of Purim is uh, mishlo, Mishloach Manot or Shalach Manot, whatever it is, uh, both phrases get used, gifts of the hands. And you're supposed to send homemade gifts of food to your loved ones or people in need. So maybe that's what it's suggesting to you, is to engage with that this month and the idea of opening your life and your home. And I'm gonna go with meals, because of food, sharing of food is always important. So definitely look at opening yourself this month to being with the people you love and your life's inner circle, that's the important part here. This isn't just like strangers or anyone in the world. But think about those people in your life who are really important to you, that inner circle of your life, and ways to engage with them more this month and by having them together for a meal or ritual or study or just a good movie. And see if there are ways to bring the natural world in. Maybe there's flowers or fruit or whatever it is. But just think about different ways to do that this month. Uh, and again, your scripture is Leviticus 23:42. All right, let me see who is next. So that was Darian. Uh, oh, Eric, you are next. Was that stop? That stop. Ooh, <sighs> tefila. All right, you're on the good track as you're here tonight. Prayer. Find the prayer of your heart. Empty yourself of stress and refill with healing and connection through prayer, which incorporates the arousing of love, awe, and awareness with the expression of gratitude and yearning. So Genesis 2463 and Samuel 1.12. All right, you're on the right track. 
So I'm going to throw it out there. If you are not a morning prayer person, Shachari, maybe you give that a try. Even just saying the Shema in the morning or maybe Moda'ani. Moda'ani. Um, maybe it's Ma'ariv and you pick one of the prayers from our evening prayers and do that or Shabbat, but it's a time to get your prayer on this month. So see what that does. And especially I'm going to, that first sentence is catching my attention. So empty yourself of stress and refill with healing and connection through prayer. So what, maybe it's meditation, whatever it is, but this is a really good month to engage fully with your prayer practice, your meditation practice, and use that for everything it can do for you. That is a reason you've been practicing. And this month is gonna be one to use that to empty yourself of stress and heal through your prayer practice. All right, that was Eric. Let's see. Uh, Karen, you are next. Ahavat Hashem, live in love. Ooh, it's Valentine's Day month too, so lots of good things for that. Do what you do out of an expansive love of the world and all creatures. A love that comes from being out in nature and deeply aware of the divine beauty and intricacy of all that is. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Yeah, this can be a great one because it can be just about letting that love flow in this month. But the flip side of this one, just keep it in mind, is when it hits you this month, when anything negative or stressful or rough hits, take that deep breath and remember that this is a month to do what you do out of an expanse of love. That can be harder than it sounds. So whether it's just breathing in the love this month or breathing out the love, you get a month full of experiencing love of the Holy One and the world around you and Okay, here's an, your official challenge, actually, for the next week, and let us know how this goes. I want you, every time you see something, anything that catches your eye as you're outside, any bird flying by, a squirrel, whatever it is, I want you to stop and take just 10 seconds and just know that that is a sign from the Holy One, especially for you, to remind you that the Holy One is part of the world and that it is an expanse of love for all creatures, including you. So everything is a positive sign this month. So take those moments and really breathe them in, whether it's a little flower or a bird or whatever it is, but everything, I want you to take that moment and think about it through the lens of Ahavata Hashem. All right, I think Karen was the last one who raised her hand. So let me see if there's anybody else who is joining us tonight who I haven't gotten to that would like a card. And if not, then I will pull one for myself and I will share that with you because that's only fair. So, I don't know if I drew in for Rebecca and I might have missed her name. So Rebecca, we're going to do you first. So Rebecca, this one's yours, so I'll start shuffling again and we'll pull for you. I'm dropping cards all over the floor. <laughs> all right, it's not the one on the floor. <laughs> Was it 
Was that okay? Stop singing already or just pull the card? All right. <laughs> Ooh, it, once again, and y'all saw me shuffling. Ah, Hadlakat Nerot, bring in the light. Create the hearth of the Jewish home by lighting Sabbath candles and Holy Day candles to frame sacred times together. Isaiah 58, 13. So same thing there. <laughs> Time to explore lighting of Sabbath candles and holiday candles for you. <laughs> I know, I should see what that one was. Oh, that's for me. Um, I dropped it again. So, bringing in the light for you. Take this month to light candles to mark sacred time and sacred space in your life. And think about creating the hearth of your home and creating a welcoming home through the lighting of the candles. So however you do it, ooh, that was the other thing that just caught my attention on this one, is however you choose to do it, make sure that your intent and what you're doing is creating a warm home. Uh, especially if it's not your common practice, sometimes it can throw the people that live live with you and love you in your life when suddenly you take on a new practice. So it's really important, especially this month for you, to make sure that you are creating a hearth that is welcoming and not just uh, taking this action. All right, so I'm going to pick that card up again. Uh, so that's mine. Uh, I have Bikor, hmm, Bikor Cholim, Visit the Sick. Support the spirit and healing of those who are physically or emotionally unwell with visits and calls. Listen to and affirm their feelings, organize as needed transportation, supplies, meals, etc. Support medical research. Interesting tag on that one. Uh, Genesis 18.1 for me. So I'm going to put this on my little stand. And I love it. What is it you plan to do? Can't see that, can you? What is it you plan to do? And that is, I guess, what I plan to do. There we go. This month of Adar. Uh, that is incredibly appropriate this month for me. I have uh, a good friend, a sister from Kohenet, who has uh, been undergoing major health struggles. And uh, I have not had a chance to call her since her surgery. It's been weighing on my mind. I even have something to send her that I haven't gotten boxed up to send her yet. So clearly that's one for me, is to take care of those I love who are ill and in need of healing. Uh, and not just think about them, but actually take the step to let them know that I am thinking about them by actually picking up the phone. Oh, so I hope those messages from the Holy One were meaningful for you. I hope that as in the month you find them growing in your life. And now let us move into the final step of our service, the receiving of energy and opening up to both what we have just learned in the moment that we have shared together and also new surprises and amazing blessings that may come to us this month. Excuse me. And I am going to let us do this with a lovely image of the natural world and listening to the Rainbow Community uh, album as we sing this one together, at least a little bit. Surrender to the luminous, the light of the one. We are opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous, the light of the one. We are opening. We are opening. We are opening. We are to 
to the luminous love light of the one we are opening we are opening we are opening we are opening <sighs> so many things we are opening ourselves to and allowing us to experience the synchronicity that comes with being aligned in the flow of the Holy One. Ah, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for being a part of One Shul. Thank you for everything it is that you do in the world, that when you take your experiences here at One Shoal out into the world, because I know that it reverberates in everything you do. That's the whole point of this, is to transform who we are as people and live more fully realized lives and lives that are more fully aligned with the path, the way of the Holy One, so we can do the work of the Holy One in the world. May this month bring you many things to be grateful for, strength for all your challenges and struggles, and the ever-present sense of your place in the world and within the Holy One. <sighs> that should say Chodesh Tov at the end of your service, so I'm just going to say Chodesh Tov, and I'll upload a corrected version later. I hope to see you all back here again soon for Brian's amazing uh, Monday night Torah studies. I'll be back with you the first uh, Shabbat in April. Wait, it's no, March. Sorry, it's only February still. The first Shabbat in February. And look forward to seeing you all on Punk Torah. 
And remember that you are this community, so everything you can do helps the community keep going, whether it's donating money, whether it's submitting an article to Punctora, whether it's commenting on an article on Punctora, or leading a service or a class. If you want to get more involved, and I know we have a house full of mostly regulars tonight, so many of you already are, but if you want to get involved, you just email Patrick at punctora.org. Uh, if you want to find me, you can find me everywhere at peel a palm, as in peeling a pomegranate. It's just easier to spell uh, at peelapalm.com, at peelapalm on Twitter, on Facebook, um, pretty much everywhere. So, and it's Ketsira at peelapalm.com if you want to email me. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I am going to play us out tonight with uh, the Sanctuary song uh, sung by the Romamu congregation in uh, New York City. So, Chodesh uh, Tov to you all, and I will see you soon. May you have a wonderful month. <laughs>